My name is Violet. I'm actually an older woman, not young like most of the people who have shared their stories here. Actually, my story is more like my daughter's story, but she told me to go ahead and post it from my perspective. I think she doesn't feel ready to share her own perspective, and I hope she finally finds the courage to share her own story by herself. Till then, you can find out what happened through me. I was a single mom to my daughter, June. Her father passed away when she was three years old. And since then, it has always been me and my daughter. She is an amazing young woman. And I am really proud of raising a kind and compassionate girl like her. But I was always sad that she wasn't very lucky in love. After going through numerous heartbreaks, she ended up marrying Liam. Since the first day we met, I always had a bad feeling about Liam. One day, I actually sat down with my daughter and said, I see that you have decided to marry Liam after all. But I don't know. June, is he really the one? Yes, Mom, he is really the one. I'm so happy to be marrying a man like him. He is so much more clever and works harder than me. Sometimes I think he's out of my league. That is some nonsense, June. Anyone would be happy to have you. Liam has been making you this way. I see that he has been taking away your self-confidence. He demeans you and belittles you all the time. You know, that's just who he is, Mom. It is true that he always got better grades than me and has a better job. I'm a little dumb, but he always knows what's right. He just wants me to do better. That's it. It was then I knew that Liam was a master manipulator. I had been approached by June's friends who worried that Liam was a controlling man and did what he wanted. Liam actually stopped many of her friends from contacting her once they stood up against him for his nasty attitude. I was seriously worried about my daughter and wanted to help, but my daughter was too far gone for me to do anything. I didn't want to confront Liam or do something drastic because I didn't want to risk getting cut off from my daughter. My best option was to stay connected so that I could swoop in when things got tough. To my surprise, my daughter seemed to be very happy after marriage. She had moved two towns over to live with Liam, and the new life was treating her well. She did stop talking to her old friends but seemed to be in good spirits. Whenever I visited her, she seemed happy, and even Liam acted very civil, so I thought maybe Liam had bettered himself after marriage. Well, that wasn't the case, as I discovered very soon. When June got pregnant, she seemed to be over the moon about the pregnancy. Naturally, I was also super happy for her. She was very excited and made a lot of plans about everything. We planned her gender reveal and baby shower, and she even asked me to be in the delivery room. I also offered to come and stay with her for a few days so that it was easier for them to adjust to their new life. However, all those plans went down the drain when my daughter called me one day with a dejected voice. She said, Mom, we have to talk about something. What is it, June? Is the baby okay? Yes, Mom. We got the ultrasound today to find out the baby's gender, but Liam doesn't want me to tell anyone. Oh, that's okay, June. If you're okay with this, it doesn't matter. This means you will have more funds for a baby shower now, also less stress. Mom, I'm not having a baby shower either. What? Why? Liam says that it's a waste of money. You know I had to leave my job to take care of the baby so I don't have spare money as such. That's okay, June. I can pitch in. It's not a big deal. You are my only daughter, after all. That won't work either, Mom. I don't know why, but Liam doesn't want to make this pregnancy a big deal. He also keeps saying how I'm getting too big and ugly, so he would rather not have everyone come and see me when I'm like this. I was taken aback by what my daughter was saying. You don't have to be a professional to know that this was downright toxic behavior. My concern for my daughter was returning in full force now. I didn't want to hound her for information because I knew she would close up and not tell me anything. 
I tried to control my emotions as best as I could, and said, What on earth are you talking about, June? This is not healthy behavior from your husband. This is ridiculous. I know, Mom. He has been trying to control my diet, too, but that didn't work since he is not at home most of the time. I think he's avoiding me now. What do I do, Mom? Don't worry, dear. None of this is your fault. Your husband is being stupid. You concentrate on your health and keeping the baby healthy. After you give birth, I will come to help you so that you two can have some quality time together. I'm sure that will make things much better. Mom, that is another thing I wanted to talk about. Liam doesn't want you in the delivery room, and he doesn't want you staying here with us. So it's best if you just visit us and leave. But we talked about this, June. You won't need help. What happened so suddenly? Did I do something wrong? No, Mom. You haven't done anything wrong. Believe me, Mom, I want you here with me. But I feel like my husband is slipping away because of the pregnancy. And I don't want to pressure him anymore. I hope you understand. Mom, I see your point, June. I'm not angry, I promise you. But please, you need to talk to your husband. What he is doing is not okay. I am really worried about you now. Relax, Mom. This is just a rough patch. Maybe Liam is right. I'm just being too hormonal. I'm sure you know women can get crazy when they're pregnant. I would hate for you to worry for nothing. A mother will always worry, June. Just promise me you will be okay, and you will call me when you need me. I will be in touch. That's all I could say to my daughter. I won't lie, but my motherly instinct was telling me that something was wrong. I was actually planning to visit my daughter and see what was going on. And I did visit my daughter to check for myself. Nothing seemed amiss, but it was true that Liam was rarely home. When I asked him, he made up some excuses about having work and being busy. For some reason, I wasn't buying it, but what else could I do? I didn't have enough resources to spy on him anyway. Very reluctantly, I had to let things go. But I did check in with my daughter a lot to make sure she was all right. June was actually getting really sad as her delivery date was arriving, and I didn't know why. I tried to ask, but she simply wouldn't tell me. Those were some of the worst days of my life when I was constantly worrying about my daughter. And turns out I was right to worry. One night, I got a frantic call from none other than my own daughter. She was hysterically crying, and I instantly felt my heart sink. I said, June, what is going on? Why are you crying so much? Tell me, are you okay? Mom, help me. I don't want to lose the baby. I think I'm going into labor. I can't get out of here. Oh my God, what is going on, June? Where are you, and why can't you get out? I'm at my house, Mom. I'm locked in the bathroom. I can't get out. I tried hard to push it open, but it's not budging. I don't want to use force because I'm afraid I will hurt my child. How did you lock yourself inside, June? Where is your husband? Where is Liam? Mom, he... My daughter absolutely broke down when I mentioned Liam. She was crying so much that I was seriously getting worried about her. The distance between us was so big that I wanted to slap myself for not moving closer to her. She was so far away from me, and I knew I couldn't just run to her right then. I felt so helpless that I even expressed it in words. June finally controlled her tears and said, Mom, Liam is the one who locked me inside this apartment. He's been cheating on me. Mom, what? Liam is cheating on you? Yes, Mom. He's hooking up with his female friend. I found out recently, and we have been having fights. When I went into labor today, he locked me in the bathroom because he didn't want me to give birth today. I want to slap the life out of that horrible man. How dare he do this to you? Where is he right now? He's out with his mistress, Mom. Today is her birthday, and that's why he didn't want me to give birth today. He told me that his mistress would be upset if I gave birth to our son on her birthday. 
Mom, what do I do now? Listen to me, June. I'm on my way to you. Don't worry, dear. I won't let anything happen to you or the baby. But I can't be there on time, so you need to call 911 and get help. I didn't want to hang up on my daughter, but I knew that I had to make some other phone calls. I was so thankful to God that June was clever enough to hide her phone inside her dress before Liam pushed her into the bathroom. If she didn't have the phone on her, Lord knows what would have happened. June was saved from that godforsaken bathroom because of her phone. She was able to call me in 911 to get help. My daughter's tears were permanently lodged into my brain as I tried to figure out what my next step would be. What I did know was that I needed to reach my daughter as soon as possible. I left my house and drove over to my daughter's place as soon as I could, but I knew it would be a long time before I would make it to her, so I called that one person who I needed at this time, my boyfriend, Dante. Now, let me tell you a little about Dante. I actually met him at a cafe when I was visiting my daughter at her house. Dante and I started talking about our kids, and we ended up really liking each other. Long story short, we are now dating, and it's been a while. Since Dante lived in my daughter's city, I knew that he would be able to help June and teach Liam a lesson. When I called him, he said, Hey, is everything okay, Violet? It's quite late. No, everything is not okay, Dante. My daughter just called me. She needs help. What? June needs help? What's wrong? Is it something about the baby? It's about a lot of things, Dante. I'm still in shock about what I heard. Liam has been having an affair. Remember how I told you I had a hunch about him? Turns out I was right. He has done something horrible. I was struggling to gather my things and leave while telling Dante what was going on. Look, I'm an old woman and don't have much family around. He was the only one I could count on. I was desperate for help and Dante knew that. In a deep voice, he said, Tell me what he's done, Violet. He's been cheating on my daughter with his friend. My daughter found out recently. Apparently it's his mistress's birthday today, and he doesn't want June to give birth on the same day. So, when she went into labor, he locked her in the bathroom and left. What in the world, Violet? Your son-in-law is a monster. How could he do this to his own child and wife? I don't know anything anymore, Dante. I'm really worried about June. I told her to call 911 for rescue, and I was on my way, but I'm still scared. Dante, what if something happens to June or the baby? Calm down, Violet. I'm here for you and your family. I will go over to the hospital right away. I will get in touch with my cop friends and find out. Yes, Dante was actually a cop and also managed his father's business, where Liam was actually employed. He was also good friends with Liam's parents and knew a lot of people around town. So, I was really relieved when he said that he would take charge and make sure my daughter was okay. He is a responsible man, which is what made me fall for him in the first place. Dante was also a single father to a daughter, so he knew exactly what I was feeling at the moment. He reached the hospital where my daughter was in record time and stayed with her since then. I rushed to the hospital where my daughter was. I went there as fast as I could. Dante had called and told me where they had taken her. I was lucky that I got to the hospital just in time to witness the birth of my granddaughter. I was so excited to be with June when she gave birth. That was the only good outcome of this entire fiasco. I did my best to make sure my daughter was comfortable after the storm she went through. I was also super happy to finally hold my granddaughter, who is the most beautiful baby in the world. She had eyes just like my daughter, and I was thanking our lucky stars that the baby didn't have that monster Liam's eyes. Not that it would make me love my granddaughter any less. After my daughter had the baby, she was sent to a private room at my insistence. 
Liam was still nowhere to be found and hadn't even called. When June was resting with the baby, she looked very sad. She was actually crying silently as Dante and I sat with her. She hadn't been able to contact Liam's parents because of everything, so it was only Dante and I with my daughter. Seeing my daughter in such a vulnerable condition absolutely broke my heart. June was crying and said, I'm so sorry, Mom. I should have listened to you in the past. I stayed with my husband because I stupidly thought he loved me. All this while, he was cheating on me and didn't even care about our child. No, June. Don't say that. You had no way to know things would escalate like this. There is no use blaming yourself. Liam had been manipulating you all this while. You are a victim. But Mom, I could have done something. Instead, I just stood there silently while he ruined my life. I should have stood up for myself when he demanded that you shouldn't be in the delivery room and couldn't even come to stay with me. He was slowly isolating me from everyone while having the time of his life. It's okay, June. Sometimes we end up making mistakes. It's not completely your fault either. As I said, Liam was manipulating you. I'm so glad I was able to call you, Mom. Dante, I also have to thank you for coming here as fast as you could. You were really a big help before my mom came to me. It's not a big deal, June. You are like family now. But I do have a question for you, dear. What do you want to do about Liam? Dante, being the cop he is, was touching on the important subject. Now that June and her daughter were all right, Liam was still a no-show, and what pissed me off was that he didn't even check up on his wife after leaving her locked in a bathroom. Every time I remember my daughter crying and desperately asking for help, it makes my blood boil. Liam deserves to rot in hell. He did something truly horrible, and I didn't want my daughter to let him get away with it. I looked at Dante, silently telling him that there was no way we would let Liam go. However, ultimately, it was up to my daughter about what she wanted to do. She was his wife, after all. As much as I wanted her to leave Liam, I knew I couldn't force her to do anything against her will. So I gently patted my daughter's head and said, Listen to me, dear. What Liam did was horrible. What he did could have made you lose your child, and even worse, if you hadn't had the cell phone with you, God knows what would have happened to you, too. Do you want to still live with a man like that? No, Mom. I really don't want to stay anymore. In fact, I don't even want to go back to the house. I will be constantly worried he will return and do something to me and my daughter. You don't have to worry about that, June. I will make sure Liam doesn't bother you. All you have to do is say the word. He is going to pay for what he did. My marriage is over. I know that much. There is no way I would ever get back with Liam. I would have tried for my daughter, but Liam has proven that he doesn't even care about her. Mom, I'm done with Liam. I don't know what to do, though. I'm pretty exhausted. It's all right, June. I understand that you are tired. Plus, you need to focus on your child now. So you look after your daughter while I look after mine. I'm here for you, June. I promise I will make him pay. I knew what I had to do. When June finally fell asleep, I talked to Dante and came up with a plan. Liam was going down, and he had no idea what was coming for him. Dante's cop friends were already at the hospital, waiting to take a statement from my daughter. Since Dante was off duty, he couldn't really do this professionally, but he sure as heck was going to deal with this as family. He talked to the officers, who then went to get June's statements. Then I told him to go ahead and make the call to Liam. Dante was going to call Liam so that I could hear the fear in his voice as he realized that his life would soon fall apart. I wanted him to feel at least a fraction of what my daughter felt when she was locked in the bathroom. So Dante gave Liam a call, which he picked up at the last ring. He said, Who is this? And why are you bothering me so late at night? This is Dante. 
I'm sure you know who I am. Oh, um, hi, Dante. What's up? Care to explain why you locked your wife in the bathroom as she went into labor? What? I don't know what you're talking about, Dante. You don't know what I'm talking about? Then explain to me why I found June locked up in the bathroom and you were nowhere to be found. Look, man, she must have somehow locked herself in the bathroom and is now blaming it on me to save face. She can be very stupid sometimes. That's when the rage blew off the top of my head. He had the audacity to call my daughter stupid and pin the blame on her. This monster deserved to be slapped across the face. I was so angry that I didn't keep quiet anymore. I said, how dare you call my daughter stupid and pin all the blame on her? My daughter was only stupid enough to love you and be with you. That's all she is responsible for. You were the one who locked my daughter in the bathroom so that she couldn't give birth today. All this just because you didn't want your child to be born on the same day as your mistress. These are all lies. You and your stupid daughter are making up stories to defame me. I always knew you two were unhinged. Listen here, Liam. You will not insult my girlfriend and her daughter like that. I will not allow it. We have plenty of proof about what you did, and it can be classified as abuse. And that's impossible. I didn't do anything. You have to believe me. Yeah. Keep trying to protect yourself, Liam. It won't work. My daughter has recorded what you told her through the bathroom door. She isn't stupid, like you said. Liam went absolutely quiet when he heard what I said. My daughter had already shown me the video where Liam was screaming from the other side of the door. My daughter was begging for Liam to let her out while Liam was insulting her and demeaning her. It also showed very clearly that Liam had intentionally locked June in the bathroom. That video was super painful to watch, but I did it anyway. My daughter lived through that, and the least I could do was to understand her pain. The video made me and Dante even angrier than before. Liam was now full-on stammering because he knew he was caught. He said, Okay, look, I know I messed up. It's not a big deal. You know what? I'll go home right now and unlock the door. It's not even a big deal. You know what? I'll go home right now and unlock the door. It's not even a big deal. It's not a big deal. You could have killed your child and wife, Liam. In this entire conversation, you didn't even ask about them once. I didn't make this phone call to scold you, Liam. I called you to tell you what is waiting for you today and for the days to come. What? What do you mean? We are filing a police report against you, Liam. You will be arrested and put into jail for abusing your wife and unborn child. I have the best cops on my team working on this case, and I'm going to make sure this whole town knows what you did. I already told your parents everything, so don't bother twisting my words. I will have the local newspaper print the story, too, so that everyone knows what a monster you are. No, no, no. Listen to me. Don't do this. Please. I'm sorry. There is no use begging anymore, Liam. You better hold your mistress tight tonight because from tomorrow, both your lives will be hell. Those were the last words I said to Liam before hanging up on him. I was raging mad and was going to let Dante do exactly what he had planned. Together we were going to ruin Liam so that he knew he messed up with the wrong person. I was also going to destroy his mistress, who thought it would be a good idea to have an affair with a married man who was about to have a child. Both of them were going down. I made that promise to myself and my daughter. Believe me, I kept it. Now, I will give credit where it's due. Since Dante was very well known in that town, he was the one who did most of the groundwork. He made sure Liam was arrested and sent to jail. Although he was able to bail himself out, Liam's reputation was already in ruins. His own parents had decided to disown him, and the same happened with his mistress as well. Since word had already spread around thanks to Dante, their family members were trying to save face by disowning their evil children. 
I should also note that Liam's parents are actually good people who came to visit my daughter and promised to be on her side. They were appalled by what Liam did and even told his other siblings what happened. His siblings had the same reaction and also ended up making contact with Liam. We could have gone for Liam's job as well, but we didn't. June was preparing for a divorce and had Liam served within a week. We were working with a good lawyer who assured us that we would take Liam to the cleaners. We wanted Liam to have his job so that he could pay alimony and child support. June also got full custody due to Liam's police case and abusive behavior. My daughter is actually doing a lot better now that she has adequate support. She actually moved into Dante's house, and we have all been living together for some time. Dante's daughter came to visit and helped us out by spreading the word to her friends, who happened to be Liam's friends too. It was glorious to see Liam lose support from all sides. After the divorce papers were served, Liam came to Dante's house begging for mercy and forgiveness. I let my daughter deal with him because I wanted her to get her own revenge and closure. I silently stood by her as she faced Liam. Liam was on his knees crying for forgiveness, saying, I'm so sorry, June. Please don't leave me. Please don't take my daughter away. What daughter are you talking about, Liam? The one you almost killed so that your mistress doesn't get upset for sharing her birthday with my baby? I made a huge mistake, June. I swear this was the only time. I will never do this again. I love you and love our child. Don't make me laugh, Liam. You never loved me. You don't get to come here and beg for mercy after you almost killed both of us. We are done, Liam. You can go back to your mistress and have a dream life with her. We have already ended things, June. Believe me, I never loved her. It was just... Spare me the details, Liam. I never wanted to know that anyway. It doesn't matter how many times you strayed or if you have ended things with her. What matters is that you cheated and left your wife and daughter in a vulnerable state. I will never forgive you for that. You deserve what is happening to you, and I promise to do my part and take you to the cleaners. Your cheating and abusive behavior will cost you, Liam. Just wait and watch. I was so proud of my daughter for standing up for herself. She didn't even need me anymore. She was strong enough to face her abuser and tell him to get lost from her life. She was in mother bear mode and wasn't going to allow a horrible man like Liam near her innocent daughter. I was so happy to see her take control of her life. Liam stayed in the front yard, crying and begging for forgiveness. After a while, Dante came home and scared him away. As I write this, June's divorce is already finalized. She got the house, alimony, and child support from Liam. Liam was given a nice lecture by the judge, who was furious about what he had done. Liam was a crying mess in court, as no one came to support him. His own parents and siblings came but sat with June to show their support for her. That day, Liam realized that he had finally lost it all. His mistake did cost him. I'm just happy my daughter and grandchild are doing great. Dante and I are actually getting married soon since he proposed. I never went back home. I'm now staying at Dante's house with our daughters and grandchild because this has become my home.